got to talk about Netanyahu. Here we have the Wall Street Journal, Thursday, August 14th. Israel outflanks White House. And here's what it is. The Israelis uh, using their military to military connections have essentially done an end run around Obama and Rice and Kerry and all these people, all of our wonderful uh, servants of the state here. And they have been helping themselves to the Pentagon arms delicatessen and at the same time tell, telling the Congress, we want more, make it snappy, send that money today, and so forth. Um, so here's the, the headline. Um, the White House and the State Department were trying to convince the Israelis to cool it on Gaza. You know, try to, try to blow up a few fewer schools, kill a few fewer kids. But the uh, official government here in Washington was caught off guard last month when they learned that the Israeli military had been quietly securing supplies of ammunition from the Pentagon without their approval. Or the Pentagon, as we're hearing from all those imperial British voices all over our media now. We're seeing the world through British eyes and we're hearing the world through British mouths. And uh, that, for some of us, is beginning to grate um, especially because of Cameron's uh, direct line to porno. So uh, these, uh, this is now a, a situation of bureaucratic uh, tension. Uh, we had last Wednesday a very uh, combative phone call between Obama and Netanyahu. Uh, and the word is, of course, that uh, – let's see if we get the exact quote for you – that, uh, Ob- that uh, Netanyahu – is uh, is reckless and irresponsible. He's a uh, devil may care warmonger, and of course Netanyahu, like the Poles, like the British, like the Lithuanians, eager to fight to the last American. So uh, here we go. Uh, this is the Wall Street Journal view. Many in the Obama administration say the Gaza conflict, the third between Israel and Hamas in less than six years has proven to them that Netanyahu and his national security team are both reckless and untrustworthy. Reckless and untrustworthy. Or the Israelis, of course, like Krauthammer and Will, the Obama administration is weak and naive, but therefore the Israelis bypass the White House in favor of allies in Congress and elsewhere in the administration. Now, my friends, we have written about the rogue network, the secret government, the invisible government, the parallel government, the rogue network, the deep state, this town, it's sometimes called, uh, or anybody or nobody. It means oligarchs, all oligarchs or no no oligarchs. Um, here is an example of the rogue network at work. So um, what goes on here is the Israelis are afraid they're running out of the missiles for the dome, the Iron Dome uh, system, right? The Iron Dome interceptor rockets are running out because they're using so many, right? The, the, maybe these Palestinian rockets are not so effective, but they do. Uh, every time you shoot one down, it's a few hundred thousand dollars. It's, it's a question. Is it 100,000 or is it 700,000, right? You can bankrupt them even if you can't. Um, defeat them militarily. Uh, on July 20th, Israel's defense ministry asked the U.S. military, not the government here, but the military, for a range of munitions, including 120 millimeter mortar shells and 40 millimeter illuminating rounds that they said were already pre-positioned in Israel. So they want to help themselves, and then they go ahead and do it. We'll have a little bit more about this in just a minute on World Crisis HBO. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. So we're just delving into this fascinating Wall Street Journal article, Thursday, August 14th. Israel outflanks White House in pressing Gaza strategy. So the Israelis help themselves to the arms bazaar, arms delicatessen, paid for by the American taxpayer. Uh, so here it was, unknown to many policy makers, Israel was moving on separate tracks to replenish supplies of lethal ammunition being used in Gaza and to expedite approval of the Iron Dome funds on Capitol Hill. So the one thing is on July 20th, 
they demand 120 millimeter mortar shells, 40 millimeter illuminating rounds. Those are those things you've seen on TV coming down slowly, right? The um, the uh, flares, so to speak. Those were already stored in Israel, but that was for U- U.S. use and other places in the Middle East. The re- the request was approved through military channels, Pentagon only, meaning rogue network only. The rogue network, for obvious reasons, has to be strong in the Pentagon. That is what 9-11 taught us. That's what we've learned in Iran-Contra or other similar events, right? The old Eric von Marbod and other people in there. Okay, so it was approved on the 23rd of July, not made public, uh, so the Israeli, uh, the Israelis got their request. No presidential approval or sign off by the Secretary of State was required or sought. Yeah, but still, <laughs> a government has to um, look after those things. Um, then we have this incident where uh, the U.S. sends Netanyahu a draft. They're expecting to get feedback on the draft and then a second draft, but Netanyahu gives it immediately to his war cabinet. Uh, that rubbed these guys here the wrong way. And then we had this famous event where on the ceasefire, um, Israel and Egypt wanted to eliminate Qatar and Turkey along with Hamas. But Kerry, obviously playing to the Qatar, Turkey, Hamas axis, tried to uh, get them back in, give them some uh, leverage. So we're told here, Kerry is completely out of sync with Israel, not just on a governmental level, but on a societal level, says this character, Michael Oren. He's the slickster, the fast-talking former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. The best thing that Kerry can do is to stay out, (laughs) says Oren. This reminds us of the moment where the Israelis are publishing things on when genocide is justifiable, right? Then the Israelis hit a few more schools, and it turns out it's the U.S. 120 millimeter and 40 millimeter rounds uh, that are (laughs) being supplied. We were blindsided, says a U.S. uh, diplomat. The Israelis are using artillery, precisely 120 millimeter, not smart bombs. Therefore, you're going to hit more civilians. And it's all done through military to military channels. They were demanding hellfire missiles. Uh, and then the uh, White House and the State Department have demanded uh, that, they, that the Pentagon consult them. And, of course, the Palestinians, seeing what seems to be obvious, they say the U.S. is a partner in this crime. Um, McCain says uh, he says the Israelis were demanding the money urgently because they were running out of interceptors and could not hold out for a month. The other uh, Bopsy twin uh, of the apocalypse, Lindsey Graham, uh, says uh, Congress approved money for Israel on August 1st as a message to the administration to stop criticizing Israel about killing all those babies, about the civilian uh, casualties. A senior Republican congressional aide said Israeli officials told senators they wanted the money sooner rather than later. Get get that money out there. Cash oggi. Cash today. That's what they're saying. Um, And uh, the last straw for many U.S. diplomats came on August 2nd when they say Israeli officials leaked to the media that Netanyahu had told the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Dan Shapiro, that the Obama administration was, quote, not to ever second guess me again, unquote, about how to deal with Hamas. So the secretary of state should butt out. The president should shut up and the U.S. should deliver everything that Netanyahu wants. Well, this is the fecklessness, is letting warmonger allies run wild. It looks like the uh, these characters, right, from Lithuania and Poland and Britain to the Israelis and others, they think that they've gotten a blank check, carte blanche, from the United States. Um, I don't think they have. I think they are choosing to interpret the fecklessness of Obama in this way, 
Uh, I would urge Obama to get somebody who could crack the whip, uh, somebody who is not a uh, feckless face man from the horsey set like uh, John Forbes Kerry of Skull and Bones, but get somebody who is an experienced bureaucratic infighter who knows what he's dealing with, crack the whip and get these people to, to, to calm down. And the same thing goes for Biden. And, of course, this would depend on Obama realizing that um, you got to back off from the conflict with Russia because this is, as Cohen, Professor Stephen Cohen and others say, and as I've said, starting in 2004, this is where you can get World War III uh, with a very, very clear scenario. The other one, of course, is Maliki. Now, there has been this huge campaign against Maliki, right? Maliki was demonized to a fare thee well, reminds us of what was done to President Diem on religious grounds. Remember, Diem was a Catholic. Oh, how could he be a Catholic in the country with all those Buddhists? And now Maliki, oh, you're such a Shiite. You're overdoing it on the Shiite front. Uh, well, uh, a lot of those Sunnis uh, didn't want to negotiate. They didn't want to be included. They're like Republicans, we might say. Right? You can't blame Obama for the Republicans being what they are. You can't blame Maliki if the Shiite Sharifs are uh, are not, not amenable, right? if they're recalcitrant and refractory, which they often are. Um, now they got rid of him. How will that go? Well, back in Vietnam, the death of Diem practically doomed the entire U.S.-Vietnam War effort before it even started. It was all an exercise in futility, or at least it, it had a heavy uh, barrier to overcome. So Maliki is now out. Let's see if things improve now that he's uh, out. Uh, so, again, I would simply say this rogue network that I have written about for years is real. In other words, this thing that Netanyahu can appeal to and get what he wants, this thing that uh, maybe the Ukrainians have figured that one out, right? We know the Ukrainians have been demanding uh, all kinds of weaponry from the U.S. Maybe Netanyahu will share his secrets, or maybe, <laughs> certainly quite possible, that Netanyahu requests weaponry from the Pentagon and then sells it to the Ukrainians. We've had that in the past, too, back in Iran-Contra in particular. So Iran-Contra-style networks that we've also heard from on 9-11 and also not heard from on 9-11 are uh, coming to the fore. Um, Hillary is running as a warmonger. She is a warmonger, and we can only assume that this rogue network under the fecklessness of a Hillary administration would simply become uh, even worse. We have these also these interesting reports about Hillary as a person. Apparently, she's become more poisonous than she was, right? This is also a very serious matter. The Secret Service is leaking again. The Secret Service is a sewer of all kinds of intelligence operations. The Secret Service really needs to be broken up. No no president can trust the Secret Service after all of that drinking and all of those prostitutes in Latin America. But what the Secret Service is now saying is that uh, she's the worst person to have to call. Okay? It's a punishment to have to call her because of her tremendous contempt for the people around her. She's as nasty welcome to the second hour of world crisis radio it's uh august 15th it's feria augusta this is also the day in 1971 when nixon and kissinger wantonly destroyed the Bretton woods uh, system and they did it under British pressure. You can read this in Surviving the Cataclysm, Your Guide to the Worst Financial Crisis in uh, Human History. It was the British who were demanding oh, about half or even more of the U.S. gold stock. And this is what forced the U.S. off the gold standard. Uh, many blamed the French, but it was not the French. It was the British. It was their way of saying, thanks for saving us in the 1940s. Yank. And here we are on the verge of war now. Kiev claims their forces destroyed Russian tanks inside Ukraine. Right? Is there a uh, whiff 
of Sarajevo or more uh, 